Duration. So this is a two-factor experimental design. Okay, two-factor experimental design where we where we take into account the four different situations. That's one factor. So situation is one factor. So the next factor will be the sampling months. So November and January. So there is two factors here. One is the sampling months. The other is the uh, situations. So we have to use the two-way ANOVA or two-factor ANOVA. In Excel, you can do a two-way ANOVA. However, you have to group it in such a way where it's like this. And you also have to take into account that the number of uh, replicates in each month is the same. Okay. So here, for each situation, there is uh, 10 replicates. So what we do is, uh, after we have uh, positioned them this way, After we have positioned them this way, we can go to data, data analysis. Okay, ANOVA two factor with replication. So they'll ask you to enter the input range. So the input range is from here, you can drag until here. The rows per sample is 10. So you enter 10 here, the alpha is 0 0.05. So the P that we are setting is at 0 0.05. Output range, uh, we'll put it at here. Okay. Then we click OK. And this is the results. Okay. So this is the ANOVA for the four different situations. Uh, no, this is the summary for the four different situations. You have your count. Uh, yeah, this is for January and this is for November. So your total is here. You have your count, sum, average, and variance. So for analysis of variance, we are looking at this data here. So sample shows the the source of uh, whether the whether the the November January the second factor whether the month sampling month actually uh, causes any significant difference. Then the column is for these situations, whether the four different situations are significantly different. And then the interaction is whether there's any interaction between the four different situations and the two uh, different months. Okay, So here we can see that the interaction is not significant. Okay, The p-value is more than 0 0.05. So there is no interaction between your first and second factor. Okay. This is important. If there is interaction between your first and second factor, then whatever happens uh, here is not that important because there is some interaction between the two factors. But because in this situation, there is no interaction between factor one and two, then this becomes relevant. Okay, so both the sampling month and the, the different situations play an important role determining the distribution of your data. Okay, so that this is how you interpret a two-way ANOVA. Okay. For this situation now, number four, 
This one compares the bacterial biomass before and after uh, antibody treatment. Okay, so uh, I use this example. So we are basically uh, using the same, same, uh, same, same experiment. So one is before, one is after the treatment. So for this, we can use a PET t test. So a PET t test because we are comparing two situations here, but uh, based on the uh, same recipient. So here we can in nano in Excel we can do a t test, a PET two sample t test. We can have a variable one range, then variable two. So hypothesized mean difference is zero, which means we are testing whether they are similar. We have labels here on the first row. The alpha is 0 0.05. So we are setting the significance level at P less than 0 0.05. So for the output range, we'll put it here. So we can see that the mean before and after looks different. Then when we look at the P, the P2 tail, it is less than 0 0.05. So there is significant difference between uh, before and after observations. So now we look at, uh, let's see how we can draw some charts in Excel. I'm sure most of you already know how to draw charts in Excel. Uh, uh, a caveat first, Excel is not a chart drawing software. Excel is a spreadsheet. So Excel is a software to manage your data, to, to copy paste, uh, handle, your data management okay it is also not a statistical software so if you are looking for more advanced statistical analysis you should look for uh, spss r or uh, past okay all this software available that you can do proper statistical analysis excel is also not a charting software, not, not for drawing graphs. Uh, because maybe for FYP or for undergraduate level it is adequate, but if you're going to be a if you're going for further studies, if you're going to be if you intend to become a, a to work in the academia, to publish papers, then you will you'll realize that journals don't really accept uh, charts drawn in Excel because uh, somehow the, 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 the quality, the resolution is not there. Okay, so there, there are other software that you can use, you know, even in uh, in R, so uh, Python R, you have a lot of uh, free software available to plot your uh, graphs. However, Excel is uh, what most of us have and we are able to make use of it. Okay, so uh, we have the same situation. So we draw graphs because um, numbers are boring. Okay, we can of course put the numbers in tables and put lots of tables to to present our case. However, you know very well numbers are boring, and you can't really see visually emit uh, the the differences that. That you want to present to your audience. So visually drawing graphs is important because it impacts your audience and immediately you are able to uh, send your message across to your audience. Okay, that's, that's why uh, good presenters usually are able to draw very nice graphs, very clear, very informative graphs. So between a good presenter and a, a normal, pre an average presenter, you can see that 
uh, there is a difference in how they 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 prepare their slides. So for this, uh, essentially, we've done a lot of replicate measurements in, for before and after situations. So we can just draw. We can just tabulate the mean now. So to tabulate the mean, we use the formula average. Okay. So what we can do is we can do this again. So in Excel, you have to if you're entering an equation, you have to put the equal sign first. Then we put an average here. Then we drag it like this. Close the bracket. Okay. SD stands for standard deviation. So in Excel, if you want standard deviation, we will do this. STDV. Then we'll do the same. We'll group the same column. So this is the mean and this is the standard deviation. So in Excel, it's very yeah, it's helpful because you can just drag it here. But then if you the problem when, when you drag is you're actually highlighting the wrong place. What you can do is just move it over here. Same goes for this. You can actually just move it. Over there. Okay, so this is your mean plus minus uh, standard deviation. So if we are to draw a graph, we can draw this graph. So clearly you can see that before and after is different. Okay, you can change the title here. Okay. So this is a bar chart. Uh, many students will probably stop here. However, uh, I will always encourage you to add an error bar. An error bar. Uh, how do you add an error bar? Error bar. Okay, from here. Add chart element. Error bar. So we're going to do. Can straight away here there's standard deviation. So they'll measure the standard deviation itself for you. Oh no, the standard deviation is it measured for you? If you're not sure whether the they are measuring the standard deviation for you, you can actually do a custom selection, you can specify the value. For your error bar, and usually you don't you don't need the both both ends. You just need the top. Uh, we can specify the value for positive. Is this? There's no negative. Okay, so this is the. Oh, you add an error bar here. Okay, format the error bar. Okay, that's all. Don't do much of it. Okay, so this is a simple graph, a bar chart showing before and after with a error bar difference. With the error bar, a standard deviation as error bar. So why why do I encourage students to put uh, an error bar? When when readers see your error bar, they immediately know that you have done replication. However, if you don't have the error bar here, uh, we will not know whether you've done a single measurement or you've done more than one measurement. Okay. So if even if you've done more than one measurement, we don't know how variable it is. What is the spread like? What is the variance like? So it is good to add a error bar here to give uh, the reader more confidence in the results that you are presenting. 
Okay. So, any questions about this? No, no, no. Okay, thanks. So, next, uh, okay, so this is essentially the same. Uh, this is a uh, temporal measurement. So, temporal measurements means we've been measuring. Uh, Chlorophyll A data. Over one year, every month. Okay, so and we carry out uh, tri triplicates, triplicate measurements. So what you should do first is get an average here. Then get a standard deviation here. So let's just see whether we can. So when you're doing a, a temporal kind of a measurement, I will usually opt for a, a scatter plot. Okay, a scatter plot. Of course, you can add a line in, uh, which means you can uh, change the data into a line. Okay, just add a line inside okay to show the variation the temporal variation observed temporal variation observed over the year how the how chlorophyll a uh, change Uh, of course, we also have uh, okay. of course, we uh, can also add an error bar here. Add a chart element, error bar, send a deviation. Looks very messy. Uh, this error bar will be from here. Yeah. Custom. We will specify the value for positive and also for negative. Okay, uh, let's try again. Positive. And negative. Okay, so that's how you add an error bar. Okay, so you can see the variation here is uh, the variance here is larger, but still the graph looks good. Okay, you can see the temporal variation of chlorophyll A over time. Okay, so that's how you can do a XY scatter plot, but with a line and a error bar. Any questions? No, Doctor. Okay, thanks. Uh, finally, if you have uh, 
a simple table like this where you have different components for students in a trip. Usually for this, we'll, we'll use a pie chart to represent uh, the different components in this group. Okay, so for pie chart, we'll probably do it this way. Okay, so, so immediately you can see the results are out. You have a, this is the group, number of students in a trip, and these are the, the students from each state that makes up the students uh, that makes up this group. Okay, so very straightforward for pie chart. So maybe in your FYP, you'll find occasions where you can use all this different charts to represent your data. Okay, so uh, use your data, uh, yeah, use it to, to present your, to visually present your data. It will be easier for your readers to, 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 to see what you have done. Okay, any questions here? Look at some uh, association statistics. So we've done comparative statistics earlier. Let's look at some association statistics. So here we have growth rate, okay, bacterial growth rate, and glucose concentration. So here we have increased the glucose concentration. We have uh, okay. We have set the glucose concentration, and then we've we measure the growth rate and the question is, is there any association between the growth rate and glucose concentration? So easiest way, uh, in Excel, the graph reads X to Y. Okay, so the first column that you highlight will be X, second column will be Y. So because uh, the independent here is glucose, the dependent here is growth rate because growth rate is dependent upon glucose. So this will be your X, this will be your Y. So let's just draw a quick graph here. Okay, you can see all oh, there's some uh, data here. So if you are looking for association between these two, we can uh, use uh, correlation okay because uh, we did not set the temperature for we did not we did not set the glucose concentration this was all measured in situ. two okay so we can because uh, both x and y is random we will use correlation uh, to analyze it in excel Correlation analysis just gives you the R. It doesn't give you anything else. I'll show you. So if you are doing correlation, if, if this is your input range with rows, labels in the first row, output range here. Okay, they only give you this. Uh, of course, if you you can use this uh, R value coefficient, R coefficient value, okay, and compare it with a table. I mean, most of the R uh, table you can obtain online. What you need is to know the degree of freedom. So the degree of freedom is uh, n minus two. Okay. So for correlation, the degree of freedom is n minus two. So from there, you can uh, determine whether your uh, correlation is significant or not. Okay. So, so if you're using Excel, you have to do several steps before you can get an answer. So if you want, you can use pass. 
which is uh, should be faster. Just copy and paste the data here. So correlation. So immediately you have your P's, P value here. So this is your R coefficient, 0 0.9807. 0 0.9807 okay then this is your p the p value is here so the p is less than 0 0.05 so we're doing the pearson's correlation okay so this is uh, significant so the 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 growth rate correlates significantly to the glucose concentration so you get another situation where we measure the nitrate concentration and then determine the growth rate of the uh, of bacteria. So uh, we do the same thing here. We highlight this and then just draw a, draw a simple x y plot. Okay. So from here, what do you what can you see? You see an outlier immediately. Okay, so that's why uh, we, even if you don't plan on using graphs in your final presentation, it is I, I like to use graphs to look at my data because visually you can see outliers, you can see patterns easier when you have graphs. Okay, so here you can see an outlier straight away. So you have to determine where your outlier is. The low line is this one. Okay, so this this is your outlier. So because you have an outlier, you have to remove your outlier. Okay. Then you can draw the graph again to see whether it works okay so now it's much better okay for of course when you remove an outlier like this you still have to you still have to state somewhere that you have an outlier here okay you are not encouraged to just remove the data like that okay so usually in 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 scientific journals even when my lab even when we consider some points to be outliers we still put it in the graph it's just that we do not use it in our final analysis so we will explain to the reader that the we'll use We'll use a different symbol. Okay, we'll use a different symbol. We'll just state that um, for this symbol, it is an outlier, and we will not be using it for our further analysis. Okay, so and then we'll just continue like that. Okay, so we do not just uh, remove the data as like that. You know, and we have to uh, present. Uh, any data that even if you are not using it you can you have to explain why you have to tell people whether it's an outlier whether it's an error in measurement and all that okay so so once you have this you can also use pass to to check out the correlation Okay. Again, it's a significantly. Uh, it's the correlation is significant. Okay, you can also plot a graph if you want. Okay, you can have a scatter plot. Okay. You have any questions about this?
All good, Doctor. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we've done this. This is just to show you how uh, how to work with uh, outliers, okay? Okay, next. Now this is a bit different. In this experiment, you set the temperature. So you've set the temperature at 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, until 45. Then you measure the growth rate. So when you've set the temperature, this is no longer a, a random distribution. So only one variable is random. Okay. So we do not use uh, we do not use correlation. Instead, we use uh, regression. So. Here, data analysis, we have regression here. So the Y is uh, dependent. So the Y will be growth rate. Growth rate will be dependent upon the temperature. Okay, so we have labels. And we also have So from here, you can see the regression, the summary output from regression analysis for this data. Of course, you can also draw a graph. Okay. Okay. So when we highlighted everything, the regression was significant. Okay. Here you can see that the degree of freedom is eight. So as I mentioned earlier in correlation, the degree of freedom is n minus two because both, both are variables that are not set by you. However, when you are doing uh, regression the degree of freedom is n minus 1 because only one is only one variable is truly random okay the other is already set by you okay that's why you you your degree of freedom when you're doing regression is n minus 1 so the F value is 128 and the significance is this. Okay. However, is there anything wrong with this graph? So if you're saying that the temperature increases with temperature increases with no growth rate increases with temperature. Okay. If growth rate increases with temperature. Uh, which is true because the p value is less than 0 0.05, so that's significant. So growth rate increases with temperature. However, the slope is the slope here is dubious. Okay, uh, you can't really believe in this slope because because you are taking in everything into account. However, if you look at the lines, the, the scatter plot, the data seems to taper off after 40 degrees Celsius, which means there is no more an increase after 40 degrees Celsius. So if you, if you want to know uh, the actual slope, how how growth rate changes with temperature you should actually be focusing on the on the last point uh, the maximum temperature that you should be using is 35 okay because after 35 degrees celsius the growth rates are no longer uh, 
affected, okay? No longer affected by the temperature. So you, so for, if I were to do this, I'll probably just reanalyze the data. But I'll just use it until 35 degrees Celsius. And then I will put it here. Okay, so this is the other regression that I've done. You can see that the okay, you can see that the R squared is better okay and the slope is of different okay the slope is different between these two okay so if you were to draw a graph you can just draw the here So, uh, for in my lab, if I were to do this, I will still use this final graph, but I will use highlight this too as a plateau stage, okay? And will tell the readers that I will not be using this for the, I did not use this for the linear regression analysis. Then I will plot the the, the linear regression analysis, linear regression as this, okay? But I will not remove this two from the graph, okay? So you always try to present uh, whatever you have, but then you guide the reader along the way as to how you are going to analyze the data. Okay. Okay, so so here you can see uh, I'm using pass to compare the two slopes. Okay, so from Excel, I I've stated that these two looks like uh, they are in the these two points look like they're in the plateau phase. So I reanalyze without these two points because I only want the significant phase, uh, the, the, this portion here, to determine the effects of temperature upon growth rate. However, in past, you can do more. You can actually compare to see whether removing these last two plots the last two dots here whether removing this from your analysis actually make made a difference okay so here you have your growth rate uh, the slopes uh, with the uh, with the two additional final dots and without the two final uh, data and one one way analysis of covariance will help you compare the plots here, equality of slopes, to see whether the two slopes are different. And here you can see that the slopes are not significantly different. Okay, So it doesn't uh, matter statistically if you were to have uh, used the last two dots or not. Okay, So from pass, uh, you can do an ANCOVA to determine this. So for comparison of slopes, you can use PASS and it's quite helpful uh, so that you can do a more analysis with it. 
uh, what is the Q10 value for growth rate? Are you familiar with Q10? So Q10 is the uh, Q10 is basic essentially the the rate change over a 10 degrees Celsius difference. So here we have a uh, from the slope and the formula so you have two different formulas here your growth rate will be y equals one is we'll use the final one here okay we'll use this value here so y equals 0 0.06787 uh, x plus the intercept so this is the this is the equation. Okay, this is the equation from this regression, where y is the growth rate, x is the temperature. So we have certain sets of temperature here. Let's just say we want to know the growth rate at twenty and thirty degrees Celsius. So we just enter the formula. Okay, then we can do the same here. Just check the formula. Okay, it's correct. So this is the growth rate at 20 degrees Celsius. This is growth rate at 30 degrees Celsius. So your Q10 for the range of 20 to 30 will be uh, this divided by this. So your Q10 has a value of 1.475. Okay. Uh, if you're doing a general uh, analysis of all the temperature studies, you uh, the general consensus is about the Q10 for biological organisms is about two. So most biological processes double in uh, rate over a 10 degree Celsius increase. Okay, now we have so there is a temperature change and a pH difference. So we want to know which one is more important for growth rate. So so this is more of a multiple linear regression. So let's see whether we can do it here. Okay. So regression again. So the Y is growth rate. Okay. However, your X is both of these factors. And then we our output range will be here. Okay. So we have two variables here at play. One is temperature and one is pH. Okay. So both of them are uh, both are the measurements, uh, both are the variables that are that we measured, and we think that it it affects the growth rate that we have. So we carry out a multiple linear regression. Usually, like usually in your experiments, we'll, we'll do the temperature first, then we'll do the pH, then we'll do them separately. And then we'll find out that, hey, both of them also affects our growth rate. Okay, so then we will find a way to uh, do them together. Maybe a uh, 
two-factor analysis. We'll do them together and use multiple linear regression to determine which of them uh, actually is more important uh, in influencing our growth rate. So we, from here, we look at temperature and pH. Okay, we look at the p-value. So at first glance, uh, temperature is more important than pH in influencing our growth rate obtained. Okay. So that is how you can interpret your data. So when you do multiple linear regression, you have... So this is like uh, one dependent, uh, two uh, independent. Okay, two factors that you are testing. So from the p value, you will determine whether uh, which variable is more important. Okay. Any questions? Any questions? No. Nope. No. So, so this is for multiple linear regression. Finally, you have this here. If you're given a data like this, then you're asked to discuss them. Of course, the first thing you gotta do is you have to plot out. Okay, draw them, draw a figure to represent them. Okay, so maybe a simple okay, a simple bar chart. Can be used okay so the Okay. So we've done this. We got the average and the standard deviation as we've done earlier. Then we'll do a simple bar chart and then do a standard error. Plus custom and we'll specify the value. Okay. So this would be a the graph to show the difference between uh, this for the, the four flowers, prices of the flowers sold in a small town. So immediately you see that there's a difference here. So next is of course, I will probably use pass to carry out an analysis of variance. So in fact, if you use pass, they can actually plot of a faster one for you immediately. Okay. So your whisker, your error bar here, can be standard error or standard deviation. Okay. So we choose standard deviation. Then. Okay. So.
So in pass, you can draw it easier, easily. Next, you can use pass to look at your analysis of variance. Okay. So it shows that the is significantly different. And you can see that why, how is it different? Okay. Okay. So hibiscus, the prices for hibiscus is significantly different from roses, tulips, and carnation. The prices for roses significantly different with carnation. The prices for tulips significantly different from carnation. So from here, he did a two-keys pairwise comparison to show how they are different.